Hi everyone, my name is John Davis and I'm a professional pianist. For me, playing the piano is more than just a job. It's a thing I love to do more than anything else in the world. I also love talking to others about what I do and I'm so happy to be here with you today to tell you about another pianist who was also a composer from a long time ago whose music I often play in concerts. The musician's name is Thomas Wiggins, but he was better known to the world as Blind Tom. You may ask, why was he called that? Well, first of all, because he could not see. He was, in fact, blind, like a number of well-known musicians in history. Let me tell you a little bit more about Thomas Wiggins, and I think you'll start to get the picture. Wiggins was African-American and born in Columbus, Georgia in 1849. Like almost all African-Americans at that time in the South, Tom was a slave and had few individual rights. In fact, Tom and his fellow slaves were born in the United States and yet were not even considered United States citizens until long after slavery had ended. Can you believe that? Tom's parents were Mingo and Charity Wiggins. There are no known pictures of Tom's father, Mingo, but here's one of the only existing photographs of Tom's mother, Charity. Tom was born on a farm owned by a man named Wiley Jones. Eventually, the farm went out of business, and Tom, still a baby, and his parents and two older sisters were sold to a neighbor just down the road named General James Neal Bethune. General Bethune was a well-known person himself, a white man. He was a well-known lawyer and newspaper publisher in Columbus and one of the most vocal supporters of slavery in the South. Bethune believed so strongly in slavery that he argued in his newspaper, The Cornerstone, that all of the southern states should leave the country over slavery and other issues, and then form their own country called the Confederate States of America, more often referred to as just the Confederacy. It was controversial views such as Bethune's that led the North to go to civil war against the South in 1861. The North eventually won the Civil War in 1865, ending slavery in the process and keeping the South as part of the United States. Why Bethune bought the Wiggins family from Wiley Jones, however, is a bit of a mystery. After all, he was not a farmer and did not need a lot of workers to take care of his little bit of land. Perhaps he wanted to prevent the Wiggins family from being sold and broken up at a slave auction, which was typical of the time. This way, Bethune could argue that slavery was not as cruel and inhumane as it really was. Nevertheless, Tom found himself the slave of General Bethune, one of the biggest supporters of slavery in the country. He was also blind and had a brain that worked differently from most other people's. Today, scientific experts would probably call Tom autistic, autism being a common mental condition, but one about which little was known during Tom's lifetime. Because of his blindness and unusual personality, however, Tom was thought by everyone around him to have been essentially useless, with little or no future as a worker on the Bethune property. One evening, however, however everything changed. The Bethune family was seated around the dinner table. While eating, all of a sudden, Everyone present heard the faint sounds of one of the Bethune daughter's piano pieces coming from the parlor just down the hall. General Bethune was confused. When he looked up from his plate, he found all of his daughters seated around the dinner table. Who then could possibly be playing the piano in the other room? Bethune and the rest of the family got up from the table and tiptoed down the hallway in order to see who was making those unmistakable and beautiful sounds. Imagine the shock when they found young Tom Wiggins, blind, perhaps autistic, and only three or four years of age, seated at the piano. Tom's talent for the piano now discovered, his musical education began. Mary, 
the oldest Bethune daughter and the family's most accomplished pianist, started Tom in on piano lessons. Once Tom had absorbed all she had to offer, more professional level teachers were brought in. They taught Tom how to play famous pieces by Bach, Beethoven, Mendelssohn, Chopin, and Liszt, among many others, and helped Tom write his first compositions. According to his mother, Tom was drawn pretty much to any noise he came across. Occasionally, however, this constant pursuit of sound got him into trouble. One story involves two metal drain pipes of different size running down the side of the Bethune house. Water dripping through them when it rained made contrasting sounds that captivated Tom. During one particularly heavy downpour, Tom crawled over to the spouts in order to listen to the music coming from them, at the same time ignoring the rush of water over his face. When he nearly drowned, the story goes, his mother had to rescue and revive him. Out of this dangerous practice came one really good thing, the composition by Tom at age just five of one of the most famous pieces entitled The Rainstorm. I hope you like it. The Rainstorm by Blind Tom. Tom's musical talent soon became widely known around the neighborhood through a series of concerts he gave in people's houses set up by Bethune to show off his young slave's unforeseen abilities. Eventually, the demand for Tom's talents became so great that in 1857, Bethune organized a public concert for eight-year-old Tom at Temperance Hall in downtown Columbus. Afterward, the recital was pronounced a huge success by both the audience and the local newspapers. However, the death of Bethune's wife soon thereafter and Bethune's growing role in the public debate over slavery and the future of the Confederacy made it impossible for him to continue as Tom's manager. So in 1859, he rented Tom out. Remember, Tom was a slave to a music promoter in Savannah, Georgia, named Perry Oliver. Oliver was a very shrewd promoter and immediately began to publicize Tom's concerts in a way that shamefully took advantage of the racism of the era. From then on, the pianist was promoted as a kind of circus animal under the stage name Blind Tom. Tom's blindness and odd personality, rather than his amazing talent for the piano, were now advertised on posters promoting his concerts. In addition, Tom's performances of his own pieces, as well as difficult piano works by famous composers, now had to share the program with a number of freak show styled keyboard and non-musical tricks designed by Oliver to take advantage of Tom's fantastic ear for sound. In concert, Tom became well known for performing Beethoven's third piano concerto with his back to the keyboard. He also became known for immediately naming the individual pitches in a cluster of random keys, <laughs> all struck at the same time by an audience member brought up to the stage. He also played three songs at once, the first in the left hand, the second in the right, and the third singing with his mouth, each in a different key. And he also sang songs in foreign languages he could not even speak. Imagine what it must have been like to see Tom to do all these tricks right in front of your eyes in between which he would also play complicated piano pieces written by himself and others. It must have been a wild scene. Yet it was not the dignified artistic showcase young Tom deserved. 
These tricks, however, were extremely popular with the audience and contributed a great deal to Tom becoming extremely famous. Tom would go on to a 50-year career during which he performed in every city and town in the United States over and over again and uh, toured France, England, and Scotland, and then in 1860 became the first African-American invited to perform for the president of the White House. And during the most successful periods, Tom's concerts and the sale of his sheet music earned not for him, but for his owner and subsequent managers an estimated $100,000 a year worth today about $3 million a year. In short, Blind Tom became the first black superstar performer in America the Jay-Z or Beyonce of his era. Tom may have become a star, but he still suffered greatly during the time when slavery still existed and after slavery had ended. For example, during the Civil War, Bethune cruelly and incredibly required Tom to give concerts to help support the Confederacy in its fight against the North. Imagine what it must have felt like to have been made to give performances that would both contribute to you remaining a slave and to the continued unfair treatment of your race. Tom, in fact, was never truly free. A year after President Lincoln legally freed the slaves in 1863, General Bethune convinced Tom's parents to sign a contract, keeping Tom in the care of General Bethune, now Tom's former manager for the next five years. After that contract ended five years later, Bethune managed, then managed to get a Virginia judge to declare Bethune's son John as Tom's new legal guardian, even though Tom's mother, Charity, was very much alive and still living in Georgia. And to add insult to injury, Tom also became the focus of not just one, but two famous court cases filed by people who wanted to get control over his very profitable career. The second of these cases left Tom in the hands of the former wife of General Bethune's son. Tom was forced to live with her against his will, even though his mother was still alive in New York City and New Jersey until his death from a stroke at age 59 in 1908. After his funeral in Manhattan a few days later, Thomas Wiggins was buried at the Evergreen Cemetery in Brooklyn in a grave that remained unmarked until just a short time ago. I'm happy to report, however, that on July 1st, 2002, almost a hundred years after Wiggins' death, a headstone was finally placed atop the pianist's remains in a ceremony organized by me and blood descendants of the Wiggins family. I hope all of you go out to Evergreen Cemetery someday to see for yourself the grave of Thomas Wiggins, who as Blind Tom became one of America's most important musicians. Thank you, and I wish you the best of luck and continued joy in your musical studies.